My name's Sasha Pete, and I'm joined by a fantastic individual. This man tore up the NSL for both West Adelaide and Morwell. None other than the great Claudio Canosa. Welcome, the Argentine great. Thank you, Sasha. Uh, thank you very much for having me, and uh, really it's a pleasure to be here. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. So tell us, Claudio, how did you fall in love with our great game? Well, Sasha, as, a, as a probably you know, I mean, I coming from a, a, a crazy football country, Argentina, where you know everybody play football, everybody talk about football, even you know your mom, your grandma. So I coming from a, a, a middle class suburb called Avellaneda, Sarandí. That imagine that we were, I was surrounding for. Uh, three first division club, Arsenal, Racing and Independiente, all in, a, in a maybe a kilometer around my home. Mm. So, and then we have some uh, uh, other second division clubs there, you know, not far away, maybe at two kilometers. So, you know, it, it's impossible to not play football. And, and you know, football is 24 hours on TV, on radio. And I fell in, I fell in love with football. I mean, my, my father also was, was a coach of a, of a community club. Um, I started very young, you know, obviously we all starting to play in the street. In Saja in Argentina, you, you grow in playing in the street. Um, and uh, in my suburb in particular, we have a lot of what they call potreros, which is not much of that now, that they are open space that now are more of a, a high rise building. So before was, you know, open spaces that, you know, people meet their kids um, from different, you know, streets. And, and, and then that's how we starting to play football. Um, and then, yeah, and then really, you know, from there it took off. Uh, eventually uh, when I was, uh, 10 or 11, I went to Arsenal of Sarandi, which is a club that was, um, was created by Grondona. Uh, Grondona was uh, vice president of FIFA and president of Argentinian football eventually. So he created that club and uh, that, that was three streets from my house. So I ended up uh, going there and then I stayed with them for uh, two years before I moved into Rising Club, which is mm. a, a bigger club, you know, uh, Rising uh, Champion of the World in, in '66. So I did all my youth in Rising Club uh, until in 1984, they loaned me to other club. And then when I got back, they sort of gave me the free transfer because Rising was um, a very big club and, and co coaches, they could not wait for young players. I, I, me as a central defender, you know, they always looking for some experienced central mm. defender, you know, mm. because they need to win. So uh, and then they say to me, look, go, um, we will have an eyes on you and go and, and try to develop in your football uh, feather. And then from there, I went to Bolivia. You know, I have a, a, a friend that played in Bolivia. He was an international player in Bolivia. So I went there one year and then come back, play in what it, what it is, the sort of the Argentinian uh, second division, but more of a... Of a in, in national second division, like mm. a, you, you qualify to be in the first division. That was a very good level. You're talking about, you know, stadiums full with 40, 30, 40,000 people capacity. And, mm. and then in, in 1991, such as when uh, somebody contacted me to come to Australia, that's amazing. Uh, that's how I come to Australia. So, Claudio, like, uh, so you mentioned you were you were you were part of racing. Obviously, one of the biggest clubs in the world. You know, racing has has always dominated um, South 
uh, American football and and at times world football, um, right. and that need for them to obviously you know have the the best players on the park, but coming through that school. How cutthroat is it being part of, let's say, for example, a racing? How many other, like, you know, you how many how many players in a squad? All right, um, yeah. Let, let me let me tell you because I when I mentioned this to other coaches, uh, or in, in in dinas I have with with coaches, you know, for the start in Argentina, you 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 not pay one cent. So once they you go for the trial and they, you know, it's hundreds, they trailing, imagine Sasha that they trailing a die in the off season, maybe 200 kids uh, a die. So it's, it's a very difficult to, to get in there. And I think uh, 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 Jose Santiago was the coach that signed me up. Um, he signed me up because I was, he like strong Strength, defenders, yeah. you know, tall defenders, defenders that, you know, do the job, marking the striker. So he was um, from the, um, uh, he coming from that style of football, Estudiantes de la Plata. It was a Bilardo era, a coach uh, that also liked that, that type of defender. So when they sign you, you form in a group of, 30 players. So 30 players in the under 17, sorry, in the under 14, 15, 16. So you training from Monday to Friday around these 30 players. And again, another 30 players from the under 15, let's say when you are in the 14. So by the end of the last training session, uh, the coach, 10 or 15 minutes before he left the session and he leaves his assistant coach to continue to do the training. And then he go to the dressing room and in a whiteboard, he write all the names. So, and then you go back to the dressing room and you read, okay, you, you canosa, 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 canosa. So, no. So it's only 16 or 18 players that they get to the squad. So, I was knowing the squad for four months. So mm-hmm. for four months, continuously you training, and you cannot go back and say to the coach, hey coach, why I am not there? Because you know, that's no equal time, you know, like here. No, 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 no. If you do that, you are out of the door. So you know, even question the coach. You put the head down. I mean, I play with some fantastic defenders. One defender in my team made the national team, uh, Gustavo Costas, actually. He played for Rising Club. Now he coached Bolivia national team. He was uh, in Paraguay before. Um, so this guy, uh, Saja, was something like a Milan Ivanovic here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So was a Milan Ivanovic when we were 14 years old. Mm-hmm. So imagine how good he was. Mm. And, and the other defenders probably were slightly better than me as well, I must say. So, so yeah, it was, you know, very difficult, very, mm. very difficult. This is, this is interesting because we, we talk about, like, you're a technical director now and, and I coach junior football. You know, now there's the philosophy of percentage game time and, you know, getting equal rights. But back then it was cutthroat. 30 players, 16 in the squad. And if your name's not up there, Tough titties, you know, come back next week and try again, try again. And this is the the mentality that creates winners, right? So, yeah, make you you fighting hard, make you, uh, you know, I I, I always uh, say to coaches here that because we have a big bag of balls, uh, you know, one ball each player. In, In Argentina, the coach do the training session with one ball, two balls. Mm. So, uh, but we, we, you appreciate more the ball, you know, you end up being in love with the ball because you don't see much of the ball. Um, it's the same scenario that, 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 that this situation we described before, you know, the, all of those things make you to try harder. All of those things make you resilient, make you, make you tough, you mm. know? Mm. Mm. Yeah, there's no doubt about it that 
Yeah. And yeah. You, so, so just just frame that for me. And you would play the other big Argentinian clubs in the area, right? So Correct. 14, Correct. 15, 16, 17. Correct. You ever, and and you, you said you, you got released at some point, you got released by racing. Did you ever have the opportunity to train with the first team or? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, and I tell me, who were some of. Tell me, who were some of the big name players in the first team squad? Oh, well, yeah. I was first. I was in long, and 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 then secondly, when when I come back, I start to training with the first first team. Imagine that the first team, the first team, Saja, just the first team, were thirty players plus the reserve players. So we used to be a, a spot of forty five training during the preseason. So, some of the big players that you probably could, could know, you maybe you know from Racing Club is Ruben Sosa, the Uruguay player, the playmaker, Italo Ortiz, another Uruguay international, Gustavo Costa, the central defender, Brindisi, Brindisi, a, a wonderful playmaker that play in Boca or, and in Argentina as well. Um, you know, uh, I can mention other ones that you probably don't know. They were yeah, yeah. so big, 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 big name players. So world, world Cup stars, really. Yeah, World Cup. Well, <coughs> excuse me, Goicochea, <coughs> the goalkeeper, mm. was in uh, in in the book. No, not with me at the time. He was in another club. Um, you know, Maradona coach uh, uh, Racing uh, actually, yeah, for six months. Uh, so, wow. so a lot of a lot of players. Uh, uh, you know, before before my time, Cardenas uh, that he scored the goal against Celtic in in eight, in nineteen sixty six. So it's. Um, it's a it's a very very big club, very prestigious club. Was so it, it was it was it, it's very difficult even yeah. now. You know, it, 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 yeah, very, of course, very you're, you're talking about it. making it at the elite level. So, make so it at the elite level, correct? So, so, Claudia, did you always were you always at the back in the center of the fence, or did you play somewhere else on the streets? Did you feel like to becoming a center forward, or do you always defend that? No, no, no. I, I first, uh, Saja, I was a left back because I was a uh, sort of a small player, and and at the time, you know, you have the strong, the bigger central defenders, and then the, the left back. Being a left footer, you know, I. I I, you know, they, they utilized me as a left back. And then this coach, Santiago, uh, saw some, something on me to be a central defender and they play always at the back, always, always at the back. Yeah, okay. I enjoying, I enjoy the challenge, you know, to, to stopping players, so or, yeah. stopping them from scoring goals. So, Cl Claudia, well, what, when did you make your, uh, let's say first eleven senior debut. How old were you? Was it in Bolivia when you played in the first team? Was that when you got loaned out? When was your first uh, senior game for right. a club? Well, when, when they loaned to me Rising Club, I was uh, at the time I just finished the military service. Uh, I was nineteen years old, so I become a pain player when I was nineteen years old. Went to Atlético Mar del Plata, which is a, a Atlético Mar del Plata have a lot of connection with Rising Club. That's they, they that's why they along me there. Yeah. So I I become a, a professional player then. Start to get paid. Um, yeah, since I was nineteen, I mean I, I was sort of a a, a paying player, put in that way. Mm, so, fantastic. Full time player. Fantastic, and and you said then you were then you went and played in Bolivia in, in front of crowds of thirty plus thousand, a crazy obviously you know football mad nation. Um, obviously, uh, you know speaking Spanish, you know even even though you would have dialect of uh, Argentinian dialect, it, it makes it easier knowing the language when you play in a different country. Correct. Well, in Bolivia, I mean. It's in South America, it's only one country that does not speak Spanish, is Brazil. Yeah. I have opportunity to move to Brazil 
um, I, I, I mean, I, I don't regret it in a bad way, but I, re I regret it not to be there because all of the Argentinian defenders go there or they've been there, they, they were very successful. You know, the Brazilian like the Argentinian defending style because they are more of playing the ball, rather Argentina are more passionate about, you know, defending. Um, the, the Brazil is the only country that does not speak Spanish. The rest, they speak Portuguese, though the rest speak Spanish. So the transition in Bolivia, it was, you know, was easy. Uh, mm. uh, it was, I mean, the, 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 the level of football in Bolivia is, is not designed in Argentina, obviously. Mm. You know, all of the Argentinians go there, they do quite well, putting it, put it in that way. So, yeah, so I, I was there for a year, and then when I come back, uh, yeah, somebody offered to me the possibility to come to Australia. And yeah, I, so I had, I, that's crazy. So, did you have connections here, or how did it work? No, well, it, it, it was it was a, a friend, a friend that play in racing with me that come to Australia first, but not to not to play football. He give up football and he he come to live here, and, and so he was in touch with uh, Raúl Blanco, uh -huh. uh, the Melita coach. And then is how I end up coming, uh, you know, uh, to In connection. Yes, yes. And then Raul recommended me to West Adelaide in '91 because West Adelaide uh, was just coming back to the National League at the time in 1991. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the strongest club there was uh Adelaide, Adelaide City, City. You know, yeah. they have a wonderful team, wonderful coach and Soramatic. They were winning championship. And we were the rivals there, you know, yeah. the, the Greek club. Mm. I still remember uh, in 1991, 92, the first season, in that first derby in Hajmar Stadio, we have 20,000 people there. Mm. And we were under the hammer for 90 minutes. That was a, a, a live game on SBS. Um, Johnny Warren, the, the, you know, the latest Johnny Warren, um, Les Murray, they were, they were the commentary, mm. in the commentary boxes. And, um, so Raymond Blair, you know, the, the Scottish uh, fullback, he played a long ball to Paul Agostino. That he was a young one just coming from just playing three or four, years, four games before. And Paul Agostino got the best of Ivano Vichatovin and he scored the goal. And mm. we could not believe that we were winning one nil. So that was probably in the 75 minutes. So mm. we ended up winning one nil, you know, by that, that action, I must say. Mm. So it was a it was a wonderful time there with satellite. Nick Pansaras was the coach, the first coach. Yeah. And then the second year, 92, 93, Blanco came over. Okay. Um, yeah, and Blanco brought uh, the like of uh, Greg Brown, Jose Iriarte, Sten Lazaridis. Yeah, yeah, so he went on to <laughs> He went went on to I think he got like you know sixty or eighty caps or something for Australia. So fantastic player. Well, a funny Sasha that I was last week with Harry Bing and Sten Lazaridis in the West Ham camp oh, yeah. because I am a coach for the West Ham Academy, and I didn't saw Sten for a long time. <clears throat> and we will remember that that time in West Adelaide. So he ended up play for West Ham and Birmingham and he make a wonderful Korea. So it was, a, it was some very good players at the time in the National League, very good players. Yeah. Unfortunately, we were, I mean, I was a visa player. Yeah. They couldn't say that I was full time, but the, the standard, not the standard, the, you know, we were training three times, sometimes four times a week rather than now the A league training you know full time they have a, a lot of coaches you know it's it's it's, it's difficult mm -hmm. it, it, it was difficult at the time um 
you know, so, well, some wonderful players, as I say, a, a player. Yeah, yeah, I think, so the, the interesting thing <laughs> is if you look at that time, let's say that in the 90s, how many players went on to go and play in the top five leagues in Europe, right? Or even the top 10 leagues, many, many, many players who if you played National League, if you're young, um, you know, it almost, um, you know, many players went on to go play overseas definitely the quality was there i mean uh, a time where the the football like you said you well it weren't full time maybe the maybe maybe the game's gone quicker but the technical qualities of the game at that time was really attractive to watch well look uh, putting it in this way uh, uh, it's the same that you know they, they all say that if alfredo di stefano couldn't play today and, you know, Alfredo Stefano was a fantastic player. And I, I mean, I remote myself to the, to the 50s at, at the top level. Now, going back here, you know, imagine the uh, other, for example, going through some of the clubs. Adelaide City have Ivanovic, Tobin, Sobok, Melta, uh, my brothers. Mori, um, Viet. Sorry, Carl Veer. They had the they had, yeah, I, they I had half the half the Australian yes, squad. Half the Australian squad. Yeah, uh, uh, Maxwell. Yeah, and some you know very clever players in, in myth, Ivano uh, Bidma, the Bidma brother. So and then uh, going back to to my club, uh, West Adelaide. We have we have you know uh, Agostino Blea. Mario Perucho who was international from Uruguay, uh, Adrian Santrac, Hugo Jimenez, and then uh, marking players like uh, Miduka, uh, uh, Moric, uh, Biskic, Little Biskic. There was so, and then Saumelbu, Trimboli, Peterson. Mm. Mm. I mean, and you go on and on and on. Marconi and Cine Olympic, mm. uh, Melbourne. I mean, I was. Oscar Crinos in, in Preston, Macedonia. Uh, yeah, he was, was quality. Oscar Crino was quality. Oscar, so, and again, friend, teammates with me in Morwell, um, you know, Warren Spin, Markovsky, uh, Tapei. Yeah. To, to mention few, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then, um, because of... I was such a uh, coming in, in 91 here. Yeah. Also, I play like again uh, Slater, Farina, um, Mitchell, and then because I end up retired in 2000, so play 10 seasons for Morwell, I end up playing with a lot of young ones. I still mm. see them today, like Hachi Thompson, Hutchinson. Mm. Um, <laughs> Uh, Jane Nord, mm. you know, players that end up playing for Australia. Obviously, that in, in Melbourne also, I play again Bresciano, Grela, mm. you know. Or oh, you're naming now Socceroos. Yes. Uh, what I wanted to ask you, what I wanted to ask you, Claudia, you marked many strikers. Obviously, you, that was your number one job, right? Your number one job was to take out the number one centre forward, right? And right. you were a man marker. So when I remembered you... You are a policeman. Yeah, yeah. So your, your, your job is to stop him. So, and I remember you being big and strong and awkward, physical presence. But when you got the ball, you could play. So you could knock the ball, play forward, break lines. But when I when I remember you is like the... the um, particularly when... I was supporting South Melbourne. We travelled to Morwell. You made you made that little that that pitch there up at Morwell like a cauldron, right? Make it tough for oppositions to break down. Right. But I wanted to ask you the question: You know, who was the one of the harder centre forwards to mark? Did you prefer marking the big and strong player like a Viduka because you're big and strong, or was it harder to mark, let's say, a Paul Trimboli who could turn you? Which one was harder? Uh, look, every striker has uh, the weakness and the strength as much as I have my weakness and strength. Uh, I probably adapt him better uh, to my style, to marking, you know, the like of Biduka or Mitchell or 
or you know Greg Brown, players like Aguaratifi, for example. For me, they were, you know I have I have more enjoyed to mark in those players than when I mark in the like of Trimboli or Mori or Tricarico, uh, you know more Molbo players, mm. but. Uh, because of my positioning and my focus was uh, one of my strongest assets, uh, such a, a part of obviously my, my physicality, uh, you know, it's a lot about concentration, it's a lot about, uh, you know, knowing that if you stop the striker uh, from scoring goals, you done your job, you know, and you contributing high with, with the team. Um, and then you put all your energy and to make sure that this uh, player that doesn't not get a sniff mm. you know, to, to the goal. So it's, it's um, you're getting better with the time when, when, you, when you are a defender, obviously that early, early in your career, you rely more on your strength and, and your physical capability. But Later on, you, you, you start to learning, you know, like where smarter. to tackle, to be a little bit more smarter. Yeah. And um, yeah, look, I, I adapting to, to answer your question, I adapting quite well, Saja, because uh, don't forget that I coming from marking strikers in Argentina. You know, I marking some uh, um, Serbian internationals, you know, or Croatian internationals when they come in to play for South Melbourne or, so, you know, I mark in English international players. So you need to be adaptable as a defender because you always will be play again, the top men. Um, many times the, 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 you know, the, or either the import player or the, um, the dancer player on, on the other team. So you need to be adaptable. You need, you need to uh, be flexible uh, um, because, you know, you, it's not like American football that you you they take the full line out and a new line coming in. So here you 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 are a defender. You need to be doing the job week in and week out. Mm. <coughs> also, in 1993, I went to Malaysia to, to play in, in one of the more well-off season, and there I, I was playing against Russians. Uh, you know, uh, international, so English international uh, sign or better level than some of the strikers they were, they were playing here. Mm, so, mm. yeah, look. Uh, the Malaysian, I mean, they were also mad. I mean, big money in that league, the yes, Malaysian the time, league. Yeah. Imagine that uh, Singapore, the Singapore national team, that they have three imports uh, and playing the Malaysian league, that was the time when Dan Hill, the you know the cigarette, cigarette a, a sponsor the league, and we have some games, 70,000 people uh, in, in the stadium. It was some fantastic. Uh, I have two Russians with me, and myself from from Argentina. Um, other clubs have Yugoslavian, English international. So it was a big, big time league at the time, you know? Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, so we, um, and like, to be fair, let's say looking back on a West Adelaide and Morwell, the budget of these two clubs, just for people that are watching today, is, is lower than, let's say, a South Melbourne or Marconi. Very Marconi nice. go and, 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 you know, get the best players in the most expensive players in South Melbourne. Um, and you're you're now you're there to do a job, but you're often marking the likes of you know the 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 Marconi's, the South Melbournes, the, the these top top things, and you're there to do a job, okay? So to negate, so um, often the the ball would be in your half defending. You'll be doing under pressure a lot. Yeah, yeah, under pressure a lot. Yeah. So you obviously, I remember. So at Morwell. Do you have um, next to you? Was it uh, Waddell next to you? Who was who was some of the central pairings? Talk to Correct. me about. Well, uh, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm trying to remember who was next to you in these central uh, pairings. Firstly, let's go back to West Adelaide. Who was your central pairing in West Adelaide? 
Correct. They used to call the Doomsday Defense. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Bobby McLaughlin was the coach. <clears throat> Harry Bingham uh, coming after. Yeah. And <clears throat> next to me was Mr. Sean Parton. Parton, that's right. So, uh, and Sean Waddell was at the back. Or uh, Adrian Penda was in the team as a midfield. But at the back, we have uh, Sean Douglas as a sweeper, Sean Waddell, or uh, you probably remember this play from, from he came from Melbourne Eye. He was a fantastic uh, a gentleman, George Hanna. Yeah, George Hanna, yeah. Yeah, he is. Played the, for Croatia, for correct, Croatia, Melbourne correct. Croatia for a long time, George Hanna. So we, yeah. we, we play a back three, but, you know, um, early, more, more, more sort of towards the, the, the back end of more where I have Manny Gautis play with me, and you know I have um, uh, Palamares play with me as well. I play in Port Melbourne, uh, but at the time uh, it was Waddell and Parton. And let me tell you, Parton was no easy to play again. Yeah, he's a uh, no nonsense. You the referees, and and he threatening people. You know, it, I remember it they, they, they also played at George Cross, uh, Waddell right. and Parton. Right. I see some of the tackles that those guys put in as like today. Oh my God. Today, yes. today, if you did that tackle, you would get the season red card. <laughs> my God. And <laughs> not only tackle, they use the hands very well, you know, Elf. the elbows very well. <laughs> and also, Sean Parton, it, it was a in post figure, yeah, and he knew the referees, you know, because playing in, in the Victorian League. So he, <laughs> <laughs> I got some story that, he, you know, he, he crunched uh, Compusianas in the corner and uh, bad, he crunched him bad. And then the referee, I think it was Jerry Connelly or, or, you know, some referee that he knew. And he went to the referee and said, you are not going to give me the yellow card for this, eh? <laughs> so uh, um, the referee, no, no, John. <laughs> so it, it was a, it was a, <clears throat> a hard time in the league, you know, yeah. because it was no videos, yeah, was yeah, no yeah, camera. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's not like a now that you have VIR and all of those yeah. technology, you know. It was a, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you, you mentioned now time. some some great players. I mean, like, like uh, now you just mentioned uh, Con Butzianis. What a great player. Uh, probably the best free kick taker in the league, I would say, even today. I think he, I would love to have him on the park to be able to put a free kick um, uh, and, and well, players like uh, Ernie Tapai. But, you know, this is the point. You know, you got like, I mean, Ernie Tapai and, and Sean Parton on the same side, but imagine like Sean Parton, like he's an adult and Ernie Tapai, like a, you know, young boy. That's the difference in size between these two. And like, it's almost... Uh, yeah, but, but uh, and also, I mean, I, I must put uh, emphasis on the other central defenders were very strong for the other clubs. I yeah. mean, I play, as I mentioned to you before, the like of Ivanovic Tobin, Andrew Marr, uh, Ryan Blair from Saumel, Pesco yeah. Koglus, uh, Charlie Yenkos, um, you know, Marconi, Ivanovic, uh, sorry, Popovic, Babic. Uh, Longon um, in, in Marconi, and uh, I mean, it was other ones, it was some, and that was very, the style, yeah. So, that was the style you had to have that a hard man, style. correct? That was the style. You, you had a hard correct. man in defense, like a hundred percent. So, you know, Melbourne, Croatia had Andrew Marth, you know, like the Sydney side teams had the Yankos, you, and Morrill had Canosa. That's it, you had exactly, one man exactly in each. An enforcer to stop the style of play. Um, yeah, probably. Horvath like was in the team as well, um, you know, in Melbourne. I, and was, <clears throat> was, I mean, I, I probably forget some of the other ones that they were equal. Uh, I play again Ironside, uh, the, 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 the New yeah, Zealand. Yeah, the international. New Zealand international. He was, he was hard too. Massive, you know. And, so, so. <clears throat> You, you, he played for Olympic, Robbie Ironside. He, he played tough. for Olympic. He played for Olympic and, and 
I remember that that game in particular in Sydney, Boyd McLaughlin uh, told me to mark him men to men iron side. So I play in midfield that game. Uh -huh. And he was like, a, you know, a, <clears throat> a tower, you know. And, yeah. and I thought, well, if this guy, you know, just hit me back, but he, he was a gentle giant, put it uh -huh. in that way. Yeah, you know, so he never he never give back to you what you give it to him. And after the game, he give you the hand. It was some fantastic duel with players that you know the game finished, they give you the hand, and and you know and, and they knew that that was your job. And mm -hmm. and they they were also grow up with that mentality, you know, that give it and take it, put it in that way. Mm -hmm. The um Tell me, which, uh, if you think back to Morwell, because Morwell always sort of like lower mid-table side, right. um, which games that you thought, ah, oh, you know, ah, oh, we got the result here today? Do you remember any results or did you, were you? Well, uh, one of the games I remember a lot was when we qualified for the final. We beat him, uh, we beat him, um, Sydney United, that was coached by uh, Kulina, and in the side was Kalach in goals, Milicic, the striker was Martin Milicic, and the defender was Popovic, Babic, <coughs> and some other players, uh, Menis Lamont. So I scored a goal in that game. Okay. A, what happened was raining die, so I anticipate <coughs> Milic in the halfway line, and, and the ball sort of moving away from me, and I shot, and was a deflection on uh, Popovic and beat Kalat, Kalat and we qualify uh, for the final that year. So um, we also have a very good team. Um, so th th that was a good time in Morwell. I have a, a very good time there with, you know, I have Harry Bingham. We, we end up being in the final. We lost against South Melbourne. In the, in the in the semi-final, sorry, not in the final. Um, I have the luck to have Franaro as a coach. He was a master of a coach. Oh, you had Arok. Yeah, he, he went there to Morwell too, yeah. Correct. He he came from South Melbourne to, to us and, you know, um, I end up to have him and then I... I imagine that I retired Sasha when I was 30, Eight years old. That, that, my last game in the National League was in Sankor Stadio <clears throat> against a Brisbane striker that we beat in then with Achi Thompson goal. And that year they ended up beating Sydney United in mm -hmm. the final mm -hmm. <clears throat> with Farina and all of them. Yeah. So that Brown and, and yeah, Alan Hunter, another hard man. Correct. Another hard man, Alan Hunter, correct. correct no, he, yeah. Yeah, another Carmen. Um, so I have very good times, you mm. know. Be, I was able to play with some, you know. I play with Billy Rye, yeah, in Morwell, you know, the Kiwi International. Just to to mention Paul Donnelly. So yeah, it was a it was a great time. Who did you, I mean, when you need to travel, did you share a room with anybody? Who was the main person that you shared the room with at Morwell? <clears throat> well, I shared the room with different players. I shared the room with Steve Moton, the goalkeeper. Ah, yeah, the goalkeeper. Yeah, Marcos Estergopoulos, that he, he's actually coaching here in, in Queensland. Okay. Uh, yeah, look, probably... John Waddell, John Waddell, John Waddell was a distinguished one. It was a <clears throat> sort of a tall and a stylish player, always look after his, you know, his hair and perfume. So he, <laughs> he was a flamboyant uh -huh. uh, uh, player, John Waddell. So yeah, look, uh, again, uh, you know, uh, uh, I was very adaptable. No, normally what, what, what I, I, I I asked him then, I said, please, after lunch, let me have a siesta for one hour. <laughs> because, you know, in South America, we prepare in that way. You have the lunch, and then you have a siesta for 45 or one hour, and then look like you recharge your energy and you get ready for the game. Yeah. So they say, no, no, Claudio, no problem. You know, you're all good. Uh, 
you know, after, after the game, obviously, you know, we went out and we enjoyed with, <clears throat> with the players and, you know, yeah, we have some very good memories. Good memories, yeah. good memories, good memories. The, uh, the, so the, so talk to me. So I, I, I touched base with Harry and he said, I said, listen, what story can you tell me about uh, Claudio Canosa? And he said, for me to ask you about the Argentinian captain, uh, Passarella, wanting striker Joe uh, Jordan to play for Argentina. What story is this? Well, pa Passarella was my idol. Passarella was the player that uh, I want to emulate. You know, I was more uh, similar to Ruggeri, if you remember the... Of course. And the, the stopper that played here in Australia and played with Maradona. <clears throat> but Passarella was a left footer, wonderful player, very good in the air. So, uh, and he was older than me. He, he, he left the trophy for Argentina in 78, in the 78 World Cup. <clears throat> so, uh, Passarella was a hard man, very hard man, and a little bit of a dirty uh, uh, defender, <laughs> like we all were, you know, from Argentina. Um, I have the, the, you know, the pleasure to talk to Passarella, and he, he said that one of the toughest strikers was the Jock Jordan, you know, the, the Scottish guy, that he didn't mind to play against Lenny Caro, he didn't mind to play against, you know, other strikers, but this Jordan, he hit him one, <clears throat> and he turned around, and he hit him back. And he <laughs> said, yeah, that's the way that the game I want to have. And then, then they were hitting each other's the whole game, he was like an animal, you know, like a worse of Passarella. <laughs> Big guy, you know, headbutting you and, and in the corners, you know, off the ball, they not even looking on the ball, they punching or, you know, they, they, they touch like war. the ball. Like a war. Like a war, like a war, like a Franado used to say in training, I want a war, you know. Uh, so with Aro, we were extremely defeat. You know, very competitive. Uh, um, yeah, he, he won a war in training. So, yeah. Understand, understand. So, and and you were saying more well, when the National League finished, they would loan you out to different uh, clubs. So, who are some of the other clubs that they loaned you out maybe for 10 games? Where did you go? Yeah, well, I play for uh, the Turkish club, um, Albion Rovers? Albion Rovers, correct. That I have the uh, pleasure to play with Claudio Lucchesi at the back. And Le Bosman was a, a young player coming up. And I went to Heidelberg. Uh, the, the Heidelberg, uh, Shefova was the coach. Um, the, you know, we play in the Olympic. Uh, Village, yeah. Yeah, um, um, was a lot of supporters. So that was the, the only two clubs that I played because one year I went to Malaysia and then and normally the other years, you know, the, I, I decided not, decide not, not to play those games and concentrate more and get fit for the, for the National League season. Mm. But yeah, I have good remembers in playing in, in, in the Victorian League, you know, in the wet, wet Victoria, Victorian League and and competitive as well, very, very competitive, you know, play against Preston or play, you know, against um, other clubs there, they, they, they were tough, very, mm, very, very mm, tough. Mm, mm. Yeah, so, uh, so Lev, Lev actually went to the same high school as me, we were in the same year, so yeah, great player, like it's, it's, uh, he went on to play, um, I think he signed one year at Morwell. I don't know if you have any first team games he played, but and then yeah, he played a lot of. Then he played uh, most of his time for Altona Magic in the state league. Uh, no, no Levosman. Levosman played in Morwell for uh, three seasons. Okay, like yeah, yeah. He made the the um, the pre-selection of the Olympic team of Australia, <clears throat> and also played for New Zealand. In the in the A League, so he have a good career. Yeah, I still in touch with with Lev, Archie, and Hutchinson, and Manny, and 
McNichol and Heisty. And Lev is doing very well now. He have a very good business. Yeah, yeah. He's a managing director of... Uh, Correct. Yeah, Correct. Of, uh, yeah. Um, so I'm happy to see that the majority of players doing doing well, you know. Fantastic. For one fantastic. Reason. Some of them are not into football. Uh, some of them doing well. And and uh, so you said you, you stopped playing at the age of 30? 38. 38. And so at what level is this? This is still a na national... Yeah, yeah. My, that was my last game in, in National League. So... Yes. I have the opportunity. I mean, when I retire, I have opportunity to go and play with the like of Bonnie Rick yeah. or even, you know, a, a club from Queensland, actually. Vandever Wave contact, contracted me and... Um, and I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to play because I give it all. You know, I, I play. Imagine two games, two hundred games in the national league. I, I come into Australia when I was twenty-seven, so I play maybe all together like five hundred games. So mm. uh, I was still very fit, but you know, was taking time to recover in between trainings and games, and, and a, a good opportunity coming up to working. Once it's such a, I was still playing, I did my courses. So I am a pro licensed coach now since 2011. And, uh, uh, um, but before that, I done several coaching courses. So when I retire, I already have some good qualification with me. And Raul Blanco called me to working with him as a technical analyst of the Olympic team, mm. Australia Olympic team for, that was in 2000. So to name me some of the players in that 2000. Oh, I got a photo there actually, Biduka. Uh, Harry Kuhl could not come because he was injured. Lazaridis, Biduka, Bresciano, Grela. Uh, uh, top, top players. Top players, who, who else was in the team? Look, I need to get the photo. The photo is, is there with me. Widmar, Casey Widmar, uh, you know, to, to mention few, very, very top players. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, that many of them were in Europe at the time. Some yeah. of them were uh, uh, here in the National League. Not too and many. Two, 2000, the 2000, uh, you said the Olympic side. Cursilla, that... Cursilla was in the team. Yeah, Michael so, Cursilla. So two, is the, you said the 2000 team. Olympic team, yeah? 2000 Olympic team, correct. So that's, that was in Sydney, the, the games, wasn't it? Correct. The first game, Sasha, the first game uh, were at uh, MCG. We have 100,000 people in the game. We play Italy. We end up losing one nil, one minute to go. Hayden Fox was the sweeper. Pirlo was playing for uh, Pirlo uh, was playing for Italy, and Gattuso was playing for Italy. Italy have a very good team, but we have a very good team too. We were very unlucky not to win the game. We miss two one on one chances. We we have Italy under the hammer that game. Mm. And unfortunately, we end up losing one nil in front of a hundred thousand people. I remember that we went from the hotel to the stadium, the bus, and the people around us they were incredible how they were behind the team. So mm. that that Olympic team was very unlucky team, I must say that because the second game again we end up draw uh, against Nigeria, I think it was. Uh, and we end up no qualify for the second round. Uh, and Spain have a wonderful team. You know, that, that was the era of Javi, Iniesta. So it was a very, very strong Olympic uh, 2000 mm. in football. Very that would have been a good experience, obviously, Raul Blanco. The one thing I, I hear about people who played under Raul Blanco, they, 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 they they always say he's very inspirational, the way he thinks, the way he sort of gets you on wanting to be a better player. Tell yeah. me about tell me about Blanco, how he style is. In in, in Raul Blanco coaching staff was also Les Chemflo, uh, that he was the Australian technical director. 
Blanco is a very, very disciplined person, very passionate for the game as well. Uh, that he he has a lot of technical and knowledge. You know, all of his training was with the ball at the time. We done everything with the ball. He was very meticulous of what he was doing at training. Again, he was a very good coach, very, very good coach. Um, I have the pleasure to working with Blanco uh, also as, as his assistant coach in Marconi. Mm. So we, he, I was his assistant coach in Marconi uh, after the Olympic game. Um, um, I end up working with him in MacArthur Rams when he ended up be the technical director and I was the, the head coach. So Blanco, uh, um, he inspired a lot of people. You know, he, he have a lot of respect from, from people. Like he, he earning respect from, from players as well. You know, um, you, know you, you always on time, you could not, getting you know late to the training the gear need to be perfect so they were running in a no a full-time environment a full-time environment put it in that way so when the the the, the way blanco treat his team was very much like it a, a european coach you know mm, 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 mm. and you uh you went on to, to coach uh, many uh, teams yourself. Um, so you said you were assistant at, uh, at uh, Marconi. Um, you, you mentioned now. Um, you, also, you also did a stint uh, coaching a country, didn't you? All right. Well, uh, just to a little bit of sum it up on that. Sasha, after uh, Macarta Rams, I, I went to Fiji, nation, uh, coaching the Fiji national team in 2011. And then I coaching, you know, clubs in, back in the, in the MPL, like Buxton City. I went one year to working in Canberra for Gangali United that was granted a, a, a license in the league. Um, and then uh, went back to I I I, I stay in Macarta Rams for six years, six 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 years, correct. And then in 2020, I think it was just before COVID, I moving to to Brisbane because I have also a son that play football, is a 16 years old. Uh, he played in, in the Brisbane Row Academy. So, you know, a few things uh, come, come along and, and then we decide to move as a family here. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, I have a daughter as well. That she's 27, she studied in the university. And uh, yeah, and, and end up working uh, for um, Win on Wolves. The, I am the technical director at, at the moment. I've been I've been with the Winnon Wolves uh, football club for the past uh, three seasons, two seasons, sorry. This will be my third season coming up now. Mm, nice, yeah. nice. So, I mean, a uh, lo lot of experience there. I mean, like you said, you, you came to Australia already in your prime. So you already, you already had a very good football knowledge. So you come here already, let's say, a made player, right? And then played for 10, 11 years uh in the national league so and you're there to do a job um I always remembered you being lean fit uh so uh so you obviously looked after you didn't eat too much in the off season so you never came back fat uh so you're always big and strong and lean but you're saying that after a while the body started to break down wore out, yeah. <laughs> wore yeah. out. Yeah, well, I I have the, the the luck that you know I not putting weight. I mean, I still have the, the same way or even less than when I was playing because I have more muscle on me at the time. Um, but I did I, I I did a lot of uh, training, you know, uh, strength training in my time and a lot of training that I end up to 
you know, with with the time and with the injuries and the the, the you know the, the the physiotherapist department, they were very little at the time. So it's not like a now you have more physios around you, the sports science coaches, mm. you know, are around there. So the longevity of a player is is is, is higher this time. You can yeah. play for long, you know. I suppose there's more there's more there's more care uh, now. More care, put it in that way, more care. We used to do, for example, such a 300 sit-ups. And now they say you're crazy if you do 300 sit-ups because you will be damage you 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 your body if you're doing that you low back so a lot of the training or we running before you know 10 12 k's uh, uh, long runs that uh, this time you know this, this uh, you know with the technology now they find that it's better to do short and sharp or you know more um, uh, sophisticated runs or rather than do you know this long tight imprecisions that you run in the beach. And so the, the football changed a lot, you know, and the, the, the way to, to not only to, to educate players, the, the way to, to educate players physically changed a lot as well. You know? Yeah, it's, it's interesting that uh, I, I don't mind some of those old school techniques, you know, the to go and just, okay, now we're doing, you know, five six k but you tell somebody now you're going to run for 10 kilometers they'll they want to shoot you you know you tell her you tell her under 18 side okay get your runners we're going on a 10 kilometer run uh and they look at you crazy but i mean that's what you need to do in a game so you know the the better players are running 10 kilometers in a game yeah 10 12 kilometers but uh, it's a more uh, yeah, it's it's walk jogging way yeah. to do the, those twelve kilometers. Yeah. So you know you 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 divide that in the whole week of preparation, and then you do him you know a, a maybe longer session or duration on intensity early in the in the in the in the week, and then you sort of load the volume. So you end up doing the same by in a different way, putting 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 in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah, I understand. And, uh, you know this. You know before, for example, if you lost on the weekend, you knew that the first training session you're running. Yeah, you, you hammered. You're running this time uh, at that time, and now you know coaches are more philosophical and it's more planning way to do it rather than just sending you for a run. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've, I mean, you've coached uh, many, um, many players or so what what i want to know is you're now speaking to that player sort of 16 17 18 19 year old boy or girl and they're going to play against people their same age and they want to make them now break into the first team what advice do you have for that player because you've you've seen many come through um what what message do you have for them Look, the, the advice is, 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 is actually simple, probably difficult to understand. It's like it, uh, uh, you know, Johan Kreibs say, football is simple. The, 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 the difficult thing is to play simple football. So, and this is, this is the same. I mean, the, um, nothing happened from one day to other. And uh, in football, you, you need to be uh, persistent. You need to be always trying your best because the, the biggest asset or skill set of a player is not the, the, the skill with the ball, is the per, to be perseverant, you know, to be constant. That is the more difficult skill to have. Because the skill level in between you and I and the other players is no a great difference. Apart of if you are exceptional, you know, skill level is only 15, 20 percent of of you gain. It's the other part of what you put in there. How much you try hard. How 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 
desperate you are to make the best of your name or make the best out of you. You know how resilient you are to, to, to prepare and be ready for the setbacks. Um, you, you know, one, one good thing, I remember Fran Aro, Fran Aro uh, say to, to me that, he say, this year you playing better than ever, Canosa. And, and so, and I was already an old player and I realized I was playing better than ever because I took every session like it couldn't be my last session. You know what I mean? I knew that my career was getting to the end and Fran Aro, he was a difficult coach to please, very difficult coach to please. If you didn't do the job, he didn't care about your name. You know, in South Melbourne, he, uh, he moving away, Trimboli, Aguaratifi, Paul Way, uh, Peterson, all of the name players to put players like uh, Komblasic, uh, Kursija, players from the style league, you know? Um, so, uh, you know, so I thought, I learned from that, that if you take every session like it's your last session, or every game like it's your last game, you will be doing well. Mm. Because if you prepare, you know, a, a properly and hard and competing with your teammate from Monday to Friday, you gain on the weekend will be easy. Mm. And then that is the advice that I give to the players, you know, trying hard, no, no wasting your time. You know, don't waste your time. If you want to be a football player, if you, if you want to, become a football player you need to try hard because you know i spoke to top top players that much much uh, better than me or they they reach higher than me and that was the secret from them you know they always try hard they always uh, prepare to bounce back or from the setback fantastic words of wisdom Claudio, thank you so much for your contribution to Australian football and your continued involvement in the game. We wish you all the very best uh, in your role there at Wyndham Wolves there in Queensland. Um, right. We yeah. wish you all the very best of success. Thank you very much, Sasha. It was a really pleasure to, to be here and share uh, some of the stories from my time of football with you. All the best and keep in touch. Hey, guys. We've come to the end of this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to our wonderful guest. If you like this type of content and would like to see more, how about you hit the like and subscribe button and have a fantastic day.